This is a continuation of my interview with Frank Paul. Okay. I'm rambling a lot. No, that's, that, that's fine. Sure. No, I, I really uh, I, I appreciate it very much, Frank, and I hope I'm not going to be intruding too much on your, your time mm -hmm. of your day. But it, it, it's things like that. Of course, I can't use it all. But uh, it gives you the kind of color that you know, Marjorie has come up here with stacks of laudatory letters. Now, that's fine, and, and Marjorie and Enero should enjoy those, and I hope that they will. But that is, that's of no value to me. No, that, that might be a, a thing here or there, you know. But no, I, I just need to get a, uh, a feel of what kind of, um, well, what, well what, what his challenges were, um, how he did or did not uh, address them. Uh, of course, I realize that this has to be a uh, fairly complimentary uh, mm -hmm. piece of work. Uh, I also feel it's going to be a little bit of history, which means it's got to be be to the point. It's going to, it, uh, I don't want to invent or perpetuate any myths. I would like this. I wouldn't intend for this to be accurate. And uh, uh, the problem is not uh, of accuracy is not so much in Palmer, but when he gets into the politics that he got into down in um, in Juneau. You know, there's more than one side of the of the story on on, on this. Thing. Uh, and Bob Atwood has told me, Bob Atwood was very frank about all these things, you know, he said that he, um, he said not every, there are many people who didn't agree with him because he was, because he uh, spent so much money and he just, you know, demanded so much money, he was able to get it, I guess he had the backing of the governor and uh, he's a persuasive person, I guess, himself. And, um, but he said there was, there were many people who opposed what he was doing. Um, because he, they felt it, it wasn't it wasn't necessary, but uh, but in a way, if you had all these, uh, you know, the TB problem, uh, maybe it was necessary. Well, it's very. I I, I think Bob put his finger on it. He said he was thinking that objective. We're digressing over here from anybody to help with. Mm -hmm. Earl was a missionary with a great deal of zeal. Mm -hmm. And he he would impress people on the Eucharist. And each time and persuade them. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would also be trying to figure out ways if he was working on a program of that, how to make things pay off. Earl was a horse trader. He did in Panama. He built in a hospital. He went up to the mines. You probably know the story. He went up to the mines and said, uh, he needed money for the hospital. And he said, uh, for $4 a man, I will um, give each person you hire a physical examination. And then if they get into any trouble uh, for the other three, they can come into the hospital. They can come to the hospital where I'll take care of them. And, you know, his, it, was, it was a gamble and it, and it paid off. Because, yes, he did get some that came to the hospital. But uh, a relatively few, but he got four dollars for every one of them. Went up to the Akutan of Vocational School, did the same thing. For X number of dollars, I'll test your kid. But he went to the Congress for And he, uh, yeah, yeah, he was a horse trainer. Odd combination. One thing that I found interesting in this material that I got from Moravian College is that he was a uh, debater mm -hmm. on the debating team. Very active. In or rhetorical contest. Now, Nancy has a fixation. And she almost is trying to create her as God. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. And uh, 
And so I don't understand it, but I am. <laughs> so she feels that everything is there. And she has all the papers and all the facts and figures yeah. and everything, and there's no need to talk to people about it. Yeah. And I told her, I said, yes, yes, it. Anybody that is trying to write about Earl has to see all sides. That's right. So they have to get, they have to, in talking to other people, they have to get the perspective, mm -hmm. not just from, mm -hmm. not just from reading these documents. That is exactly right. They have, okay. She has to talk to people, mm -hmm. find out what the people are. Mm -hmm. And she says, well, what do they have, what do they have to say? I know where all these are all of them. Mm -hmm. I know from, yeah. And I don't know if you've bumped into that yet or not. Oh, yes, I have. I, I did. That was uh, very clear the first uh, half hour in, in Bradenton. Uh, you know, as to what what the what the situation was, and it's why I've really I've, I've really been ducking her while she's up here. But I, I've I've got to get to it. But the as reason as I said to you is is not just because uh, uh, I I understand how she would like the book to be written. I don't think he wants it that way. I don't hear any objections out of Earl. But the thing with is, she also doesn't know that much. She does, she really she she's not that valuable, to, you know, to me in, in writing this because she. She, she doesn't know, and, and a lot of the things that she has told me, the, the years have been wrong, some of the facts have been wrong, and I met with some wonderful nurses up in town who were, who were with him, and, um, uh, and, and were there when some of these cases happened. They, they, were, they were just terrific. They were, they were wonderful people. Um, and, you know, they, these are people who are on the scene, and, and uh, you know, I trust them. I, I trust them, but uh, she was not in power. I think she, you know, can't can't uh, pretend well, that she was. It's a no. I mean, there there are many things. I mean, she she's been talking, and she's been getting my ear on a lot of these things, and been telling me all these things about Earl. Well, I've been working with Earl all the time, yeah. and I know all of these things. Yeah. I don't have to have you no. read it to me. No. I'm going to, because uh, I think, as I may have said to you, uh, I really miss the, I'm sorry that I don't have the, those times clips, because I could go in and write A, under A, I would find Albrecht, and I would be able to take out these funny little notebooks, these little three ring notebooks in which they pasted everything, you know. Um, you can use the, um, you can use the Daily News, but they don't have it by topic. They have it, you must know the date. Um, I'm going to see if I can't, can't get in there, but she had told me about, um, she said, you're going to run into this, and she said, but Earl was absolutely exonerated with a, and I, I have yet to come across the story of the doctor in, in Juneau, was it, what was the confrontation with the doctor in Juneau? Uh, it was Dr. Whitehead. It was Dr. Whitehead, I thought I recognized the name when he said Whitehead, who had been one of the Whitehead is the one that brought the church in. Yeah. What did he charge him with? Uh, evidently, it was falsification and misappropriation of funds. Ye gods, really. Now, was, what was Whitehead at that time? Because Whitehead had been one of these commissioners beforehand. Uh, Whitehead had been one of, the, one of the commissioners under the Territorial Court of Health. Right. And Earl at times didn't always get along with the medical society. Why not? So, so there was opposition. Well, why didn't he get along with the medical society? Yeah. But uh, there was never the strong support. They, they, they gave him support, but there was, there was opposition. I think primarily because some of the programs they thought he was cutting into some of their programs. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Or cutting into their practice. And I see. Even their immunization programs and mm -hmm. clinics and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it's the early days of the cries of socialized medicine. I see. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what. And There was 
the general empire carried the storms. The general empire also was was not. I mean, they they may have been biased, so I don't think. Yeah. I've come across that, but he, um, they, they were very much opposed to him. And in fact, Bob told me, told me that he said that they, um, they campaigned again editorially that they were very, very much opposed to him. Yeah, and I do think, I think Whitehead, Whitehead was in the legislature. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. Funny. But there was another legislator from the junior district. that was really after all break. I think his name was Jensen. Jensen or Jensen, something like that. Mm -hmm. And there, there were legislative hearings. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you all the details. I'll get it out of the time. I'll get it out of Steve. Steve McCutcheon will tell me. He can tell you the one person that could, could tell you more is probably Lois John. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now she's out. She's on one of my list. She she's in the um, Sitka. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I want to go back on. No, I'm, I'm going to be skipping around a lot of things here. But, uh, We're asking about Earl. Earl had the habit of charming people and making promises. Come to Alaska, and we'll do this, and we'll do this, and we'll do this, and we'll do this. And and forget all the nuclear stuff. And he'd sometimes forget even to notify the, the staff or the agency that he would need to pick up on. Oh my. So the person shows up. And so Louis Jung. Earl had met Lois and had talked to the TV Association, National TV Association, about the great TV problem. And let, me, let me ask you something. What, what, was, the, was TV as much of a problem in the lower 48 as it was here? Not as big a problem. I think. I mean, it was still a problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay. so they had the So Earl said, fine, we need somebody up here. Mm -hmm. And so on and so forth. And so Lois came. And what, what was she? What, how, what, what had she been doing? What, what had qualified her for this? Well, she, what did, she, was, she was working at a TV association okay. at the time. The national level, one of the states. Okay. I think Earl had forgotten to tell the Alaska TV Association about it, but she shows up. And but is she to take it over? Is she to be the head yes, of it? She was to work with it. Oh, she's to work with it. Can't be a thing to think of that as a. Was this uh, a habit that he had, or was this a. Uh, an artist mistake in his part, or was this no, just his way of doing this, business? This, is, this, this happened on some other occasions, and promising the doctors and them not being able to. Well, that's certainly not being a good administrator. And, but anyway, and he didn't tell the health department staff about her coming. And they were trying to figure out what Miss Samuel she was doing or what she was. And she was probably wondering herself. Right. But anyway, she rattled around the office. And so.
so the office was in Juneau? In Juneau. Mm -hmm. This is all in Juneau. Okay. So the public health nurse at that time was in Juneau was Dorothy Whitney. Yes. Okay. Have you run across Dorothy Whitney? No, Whitney's but I've, uh, I, I've run across her name. Oh, yeah. These nurses in Promise told me to talk to Dorothy Whitney. I thought she was identified with Promise. Hmm. Dorothy Whitney. Well, Dorothy's dead. Dorothy is dead? Oh, yes. Oh, they said, this is who you, you should talk to Dorothy Whitney. Maybe they meant I should have talked to Dorothy Whitney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, because Dorothy was the one that more or less talked a great deal to Earl about public health. He was he was really not trained in public health. No, no. He hadn't uh, ever expected to, uh, you know, to to, to no. do that. No. no. In fact, uh, as if, as I read his his. Uh, Academic record there, and he and, and as he talked about it himself, um, he did not. He he just visualized visualized being a typical Moravian medical missionary. Missionary doctor. Missionary doctor. Hands on one on That's right. That's right. That's what he anticipated. That was. That was and, what he, and he still was on the one yeah. on one person. Uh huh. Uh -huh. But. Uh, he was up in the Palmer Hospital, and Dorothy was our public health nurse in Palmer. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. And so, of course, see, they would, their, their paths would cross because there's the doctor at the hospital, and as the doctor in the area, mm -hmm. the public health nurse works for the local physician. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so they became very, very one of very, very firm companions in understanding the public health and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And she was transferred into Juno and I mean, into Anchorage as a public health mm -hmm. nurse. And then, so he was, when he had his, uh, when he was out at Elmendorf, it was a hospital commander, but he would always be coming in and then talk to Dorothy about mm -hmm. I've heard that this was, was this was a romantic relationship as well, I understand. Oh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According to Max, it was very much so. And, and uh, so, uh, so then, when he went down to, when he went down to Juno, mm -hmm. Dorothy came in and, and became the chief nurse. And it was Dorothy that, that did a lot of that administering and kept him on track. And so at the time, I mean, the department, I mean, we knew we wanted to get things done, we worked with Dorothy and mm -hmm. she worked on her own. And when Lois entered the picture, Lois Jen. Yeah. Lois, uh, Dorothy felt sorry for Lois and gave her a desk in her office. And uh, said, well, you can bunk in with me in the apartment and I'll stay with mm -hmm. the I see. And that's been a long rest of the mm -hmm. And Lois is an excellent administrator. She is a top notch administrator. Yeah, yeah. And she's the one that really Say that. I would say the same thing. She made the about on her. Because she gave us the department rules book, procedures book, and personnel and handling mm -hmm. things, leave slips and everything. It was clear cut and it was our Bible. It was kept up to date. And we knew what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she was the one to keep her on track. And she said, well, you can do this and you can't do that. Yeah. And she kept him out of a lot of trouble. Yeah. That wasn't easy not to get that kind of person. You know? Well, yeah. That's easy not to get that kind of person. And, but anyway, it was, the reason I'm bringing this up is because mm -hmm. then, 
It was the department then was all for John Whitman. That was the part. Yeah. And it was also felt that if you wanted, if you went to Albrecht, uh, he would consult with Jenny Victor before he came back to you. Well, they, they knew public health and he did not. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we learned to work things, yeah. bounce things off of Whitney and Jenny before heading off it. Sounds like corporate life, doesn't it? That's what I think IBM and General Motors and all that, I think they all operate the same way. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. that was another side. So. Yeah. Well, what, what happened with this matter of Dr. Wayne? Dude, um, actually says, well, he was exonerated. Uh, how was he exonerated? Did they, well, what, did this ever come to a court matter, a, a legal situation? There were, there, there, there was, there were hearings. There were hearings. And according to Marge, as I remember, uh, there, he was exonerated. But as I remember, Jensen told him that he was going to make life miserable. Yeah. So. That's probably when he went to Ohio. Yeah. I thought, well, you know, that, that job in Ohio didn't make any sense. Uh, for, him, for him, I mean, it didn't, didn't seem to be a logical progression for, for, for him. Uh, well, I don't know why he went to Ohio. He went to Ohio as, to go in as an assistant. He was interested in the mental health aspect. Why, I don't know. Of course, he did work on the mental health programs here in Alaska. Mm -hmm. It seems to never be getting those changed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. I mean, that was, that was another one of his contributions for some mental health. Yeah, and it was a mess, wasn't it? Of course. Still is. It's worse. It's worse. But, but was he involved in that whole thing about the mental health trust? Is that, did that oh, no. become... No. No. He wasn't that involved. Where he was, where, where he was involved, was prior to the uh, prior to his involvement, all the mental health patients uh, were jailed, and then it deemed. be necessary to incarcerate him, it was then shipped to Morningside, outside of it. Oh, was that in Oregon or was it Washington? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oregon. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and there was a standard, standard joke, I mean, there were there, 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 there three sides to an ass, inside, outside, and on inside. Catherine Statham had that in the story. She writes now, I don't know if you know Catherine, but she, she, uh, she hired me at the Times, and she now writes for Alaska Magazine, and she um, did a story on Alaskans who live outside. And she says, the way you can tell a real Alaskan, if you ask, if you ask him what are the three sides of Alaska, mm -hmm. if they know Morningside, then they're, then they're bona fide Alaskans. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And how did he, what, so what did he do? How did he change that? So then he was in establishing a, uh, the mental health programs, and establishing a division of mental health. And he did that? Or it was done during his term? That's right. Mm -hmm. Was that a department or a division? Would you have any idea? Mental health department division? This is, this is his statement. Mm -hmm. 
But do, do, do you think that this was originated with him, or do you think it would have come out of somebody? Would it would have come from Dorothy, but you have a lower judge? Or do you think that this was something that he would have... I think he had a very definite interest in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, it was one of the problems. I, and... This, this goes into the background as far as earlier his, his comments um, and the comments of all the others asking, see, remember we were still a territory. Right. So anything, mm -hmm. any changing, had to go through Congress. Had to go through Congress. We always had a big Congress. Yeah. What kind of uh, support did he get in Congress? I mean, do you remember? Mm -hmm. did he, the bill passed. The bill passed. Mm -hmm. Did he get Did he get support up here? Yes. And he got support. Uh huh. Even uh, though he, uh, even though he's running into trouble with the uh, opposition in Juneau and in the legislature, did they they supported him on this? Yes. Did they? The statement, the uh, con the need apparently was it was uh, apparently obvious. Oh, yes. yeah. I mean, there was a great need. And and out of this, um, what, what what came what came out of this? Do we get such things as API and so? Well, it was established by the division, and then out of that eventually came API. Okay. And but before that it was also establishing the. Established in the Soviet of the Ground East, that was before API. Well, what, what, what's in the Ground East? Well, that was, that was the original Men in Hospital program. Was oh, that the first one in the state? I think. Okay. You know, is it still in existence there? Well, that's been changed. There's now a really, uh, And he's now taking for the retired Oh yes, that's right. They ran into trouble just a, a year or two ago um, with some sort of accreditation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it is. It is yeah, right, very tired or something like that. Yeah, that's right. I mean, of course, API was then established. And uh, is there any other psychiatric institute in the state? I can find it. You know, API is it? it it's API is the only state one. Is it? There are the, the private facilities yes. that have recently cropped up. Right. But that's the only state one is, is API. Mm -hmm. okay. Did this mean that people no longer went to the morning sun? Right. Okay. Well, you see, what it, what it was is that instead of being treated as criminals, oh, okay. Okay. Who are not being counted as patients. Uh -huh. Well, he was, you know, ahead of his time, perhaps, and maybe in those days, I don't know. No, 40, 52? No, I guess things were changing. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you want to look at any of these documents, it's really easier. Right? Okay. I'd like, be glad to learn whatever All you right. Guess. Well, I'm not going to take them out of here, uh, okay. Frank, but I, I just might want to see, see some things. Just let me... This is the speech that he made. Is this That's the right. talk that he made? Okay. I might want to might want to look at that sometime. Sure. Don't lose sight of that. Uh, I, I like to hear his arguments, you know, and uh, so on. Uh, I understand he could be very, as you said before him, very persuasive. Particularly, he had better luck in Congress than he had with the, with the uh, territorial legislature, apparently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could... He could spot... He could... He could turn the spots in for the snake, I think. Yeah, he's still a cute little guy. Oh, yes. Yeah. He, 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 has, <laughs> he has another habit, too. I mean, it's, it's almost... Though he said he was never interested in politics, and he didn't like politics, he still had a politician's glad hand in He brushes up to you how wonderful it is to see you, and he greets you, and you think, boy, such a wonderful person to shake your hand. 
at that test for about a minute. And now all of a sudden his eyes were on green and across the next paper. Now it depends if, I mean if it's somebody of great importance I mean, to him, he'll spend longer. Did he did he is that a trick he learned from greening? I've heard that greening taught him just how to how to make his ways around the the heart of the politics. Mm -hmm. But he was, you know, when I look back at this, these little things that I got from Raven, and this nice friend of mine, he, he's the archivist there, he dug them out. He said, well, Nancy, I don't know, this is, doesn't probably mean too much. I, I thought to myself, it means so much more than you know. It just tells you, you know, because even then, um, you know, on, on so many things, all at the same time, you know, president, class president twice. Mm -hmm. um, President of the band uh, on the in, in on the uh, in the drama club on the on the school newspaper on the college newspaper you know everything you look at this thing this they're all over it's the ER, like that, every, everywhere and everything and I thought you know that why why does someone take on all, all that that type of, you still you have to get to school you know you still got to go to classes do your homework assignments but. Um, even even then he was, uh, and his he had a younger brother who came through two years after he did, mm -hmm. and they never even heard from him. He just came, but the school left. <laughs> but he was uh, no, he, he even then he was he was just that type of person. And Marjorie has a uh, story that she told me. It's a. Uh, uh, when he, when he was a young boy, and they were performing some sort of he and his brother and a friend, and they were they were organizing something. They, it was a little skit, and uh, the brother said, "Well, you know, you've got the best part." And uh, Earl said, uh, "Earl was the signing part, and he took the best part for, for himself." And the uh, the brother was unhappy about this, and he said, "Well, the, you know, I can I can do your part too." Well, they, so it, it, it was it was just in him. It was just in him to be that it. way. It was just in him to be that way. Yeah. Now the strange thing is, when they were talking like about all these all these things, um, when he was the commanding officer of the five thousand fifth hospital out here. Okay. Is that what it was? Five thousand. Okay. Um, I think that's 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 what it became. Okay. I, I I've got some clips on that. I I can find out. Uh, I, I know when I served out there it was at five thousand feet. Um, there was Marge tells me that. Earl never dreamed that he would be commissioner, that he always wanted to go back to Bethel, and so on and so forth. Well, I, I was quite dubious about that, and I stated so. And she sort of bristled. She said, Bill well, Marge, Earl, from the moment he was in that hospital, he did, he went out and as part of his hospital duties, he, did, he, he went out to the villages and worked with National Guard and so on. Oh, did he? Mm -hmm. And did medical examinations and went out in the villages and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but so far as I know, that He dreamed of the time that he would get out of the service and go into public health and be commissioner. He did. He did? He did. Warren Evelyn, who was my mm -hmm. boss, was also in the military and was a laboratory officer mm -hmm. at the 5,000. Oh, yes. okay. And Warren kept on always told me, he says, how he and Earl used to sit in there in the evenings and talk about public health in the last week. Uh -huh. 
-hmm. And Earl would say, well, when I use a programming job, I'd like to do, and all we had was mind how we would stamp the department and everything. Really? Really? Yeah, and he said, when I get out, he said, Warren, I want you to be chief of laboratories and all the people in the way. Then he got mad at Warren because Warren decided that he'd stay in the Army. Mm -hmm. And Earl felt very betrayed by that. Mm -hmm. But he had pulled all the strings mm -hmm. so that he would get the job. He would get it. Yeah. So, according to Marge, he was very surprised. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said he didn't want to be involved in politics and he would make statements that he, that he, he would accept it, but he didn't want to be involved in politics and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, he must have known it was a political job. Anything of that nature is. But, but, but anyway, yeah. it was in his mind. I see, yeah. yeah. And it was his plan. Mm -hmm. And he did get it. So, he had, I mean, Earl had some long range plans. Yeah. Well, this is one thing that people have said to me. Um, and, and Marjorie says this, too. Um, that he, he always plans, he always looks ahead. Five, ten years. Come mm -hmm. As to, he, he, she said he's done this all his life, just to look ahead as well, where he wants to be, and then makes his goal towards it. Well, that's good quality. Yeah, it's good. It's a good quality. Now, it's the same way as, now, after he went out to the States, then he was in, he was in, uh, in Ohio, and then from Ohio, he moved to Pennsylvania. And, then was at Jefferson College, now, I don't, I don't know too much about that period at all. Yeah. He was at Jefferson College, and then he's also with the Pennsylvania Commissioner of the Pennsylvania Health Department. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know much about this either, and of course I had thought originally that I was going to go to Ohio and go to Pennsylvania and do some, you know, spend some time there as I would at, uh, um, at, at June, you know, just going through files and talking, talking to people there, but uh, when uh, uh, Helen ran out of money, this is when we decided that we were just going to combine Pennsylvania and Ohio in, in one chapter. Um, and I don't, and I, uh, that, that, that's going to be, that's going to be kind of tough to get. I've got to, um, I, I still may have to go to, go to Ohio or Baltimore, Pennsylvania, but I, to, to get some sort of information. Because once again, Marjorie doesn't have that. She, uh, I was surprised to find that he was still married to Blanche when he was in Pennsylvania. I thought that marriage had, had broken up from references that had been made. Uh, I thought that marriage had broken up probably when he was in Juneau, but they, they were married for quite some time. Because they, they married in 1935, and when he uh, came here, and... Uh, well, this is something that's been puzzling me all along. This is pretty much off the record part, too, on it. Is that on... When I when I talked to Stella about Earl, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. she seems to say that Earl in his early times was single, and I didn't remember that. And I've been trying to. I knew by the time I came up here in '38 and on '39, Earl was married. Because uh, Stella said, well, I, I could have married Earl. Well, she would have had to act fast because he came in May and he was married in September, on uh, September 9th, 1935. Mm -hmm. He was married just, what was May, June, July, August, five months after he came up here. Mm -hmm. He married down here at the Anchorage Presbyterian Church. And he adopted the two children. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know 
as as I said, I mean, I've, um, I'm Berlin Land Warehouse in 1932. And that's where I guess book. And but other than that, I don't remember her too well. Uh, Bob um, Edward knew, knew her pretty well. And uh, she was a parent. I said, you know, as he told about her, I said, you know what she was? She was an Easterner. I said, I know how you feel about that. Uh, formal, stiff, you know. But these nurses that I spoke with, um, particularly is this one, Claire Copperwood, and I don't know if you would know her. I know. And um, I thought she was quite, quite a lady. She, she had, I, I came home, I said my husband, if I was ever sick, that's the one I want. She just struck me as being a real nurse. She, she came to her defense. She said that she was a, um, that, that she was a, a very gracious person. And, uh, but I, I think probably her idea of how you conduct yourself may not have gone over too well in the frontier town of town mm -hmm. with uh, some farmers and whatever they were from Michigan and Wisconsin mm -hmm. and Minnesota. Middle West. Yeah. So apparently it um, wasn't that. Uh, Max Sher Sherrod said she was a very bright woman. He said she was brighter than hell. But uh, apparently, uh, I, I gather though from the whole thing that the marriage was never really, never really a good marriage. Never really met. <coughs> never really happy. Never. Uh, and so the, he went his way, uh, you know, and she apparently took care of the house and the garden. She was wonderful there and uh, enjoyed that. But I I was surprised to find that you know, all through, you know, the Army, the Juno, Ohio. Pennsylvania, they were still together, and I, I just did assume they must have divorced before that, but uh, they, they did not. And uh, my wife, she doesn't like to talk about any of this, and she's not, she's no value when she does, because it's, you know, she, I just get Marjorie's point, point of view, and uh, that's uh, so it does. But um, Lance just died of cancer some time ago, I gather. But, uh, and no. I, I really don't like to get into it. With I don't like to, I mean, I don't no, like and to. There's really, and I'm not going to use much of it in the book either, except to show that, uh, uh, for example, up in Palmer, they said that he worked, you know, nonstop. These nurses said he was always there, seven days a week, and it was always something like that. And they said, you know, he was just never home much. Just that, you know, sort of territory something, and apparently he, he did do a lot there. Yeah. No. In keeping, trying to keep the certain polar health idea also of his involvement. It was while he was outside the Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, he was a member of the Arctic Institute of North America and then was selected to the governing, onto the governing board of the Arctic Institute of North America. Is there any history of this circumpolar? There must be some sort of record for this thing, aren't there? Right there. <laughs> Were you involved with it? Yeah. Well, not, not with this particular. I was, I was here, but not. Did you serve on, uh, were you serving in any committees for the Marine? Were you involved and active with it in any way? Well, I was. Uh, let's see, by this time, 67, I was back in Wisconsin. And, uh, but I knew about this meeting in 67. Mm -hmm. And then later on, uh, as the meetings progressed, as the triangle meetings progress, I knew about them. And then when it came back to that in one of our meetings in Fairbanks at the Alaska Science Conference. Okay. Is when we organized them. 
the American Society of Circulatory Health. Uh, That's where I became involved. Okay. The American Society. Uh, he he was involved in forming that. Yes. Uh, of second, the American Society. Was yes. he involved in building that? Yes. He was at this conference in Fairbanks that you're talking about? Oh, yes. Oh, I see. And, and what year was that? 79 or 80. 80. 80. And, and when was, uh, what was, out of, out of this American Society of Second Polar Health came the International Union? Oh, the International the, Union. The concept of of circumpolar health. Okay. It was back in '67. Yes, I thought that was when they had their first meeting. Is that right? Yeah, that was the first symposium. Now, how did they? Who brought this together? Well, it's all in here for you. Is it? All right. It's, it's rather right. I mean, it's a real show. Okay. Uh, I don't want to say, if, if, you'll, if, if, if this is here, don't let me, excuse me, no, Frank, just take this right away from you. Uh, I did what's conceived by, I don't know if I can really say this. Now, what started all of this? And you have to back up. Okay. Is the Arctic Health Research Center was established. Now this was the one that Earl had talked about with Congress to get all the sanitation. Nice. And so there was an establishment of a research center to the study of Alaska health problems. Just Alaska? Well, mm -hmm. Arctic health problems. Okay. So then this was a federal that's appointment? A public, that's mm -hmm. a public health service. Public health okay. So therefore, those scientists that were working in the Arctic Health Research Center mm -hmm. in studying that uh, mm -hmm. developed a network Okay. An international network of scientists. Okay. So they felt it would be of great advantage if they could have a meeting. Okay. So this thing became between Haldeman. Uh huh. Uh, between Arctic Health Research Center mm -hmm. and the Arctic Institute in North America. Okay. And uh, so how so uh, Albrecht uh, carried the ball at the Arctic Health at the Arctic Institute of North America. Okay. To gain his support and then they went after the additional funding. Uh when wait, you went to Congress for the additional funding? No. no. Arctic Institute and uh, they have money and they they, they they went to one of the uh, 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 private uh, they, they went to some of the other federal agencies. Oh I see. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Is it is it uh, stated in here, yeah. I imagine it is, as to which conditions what the conditions were that inspired this? What, what, what were the health situations that inspired something that was confined to circumpolar regions? Well, yes, this uh -huh. health problems in Alaska. Uh -huh. Because it's uh, uh, when he came to um, you know Finland and uh, Iceland and so on, were there uh, did they have? There were couple. But does this tell me will this will this tell me what the problems were? It will tell you about what some of the research. I mean, what they what they uh, 
what their interests were in uh, in various areas in mental health. Uh, do they have? Um, do they, do uh, are there, there? There must be reports of all these meetings that they've had. Are they available here? No. The then uh, every three years. Mm -hmm. International, the international right. congresses have met. Right. Every year, every year since 67. 60. No. Let's see if we're the 10th, or 10th in 1993. Yes, I can see it would be. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, does this UAA Albert Albrecht Milan Foundation have this information? Do you know? No, I'm told that this is. No. Well, what I would like to get are the are the reports of what took place at these meetings. There are the uh, the proceedings were were published. They're, they're a great big. Oh boy. <laughs> but I've got to, I've got to uh, look through them to see what they And, uh... Are, are they at the Albrecht Mountain? No. no. They'd be... Uh, they, they should be over at the library over here. Oh, the archives? At the archives. Well, they, are, they may be in their health uh, uh, library. They're over in the health library. They're in the health library. Are they in the health library? I got a list of, I asked the, um, I asked them for information that they might have relating to this, and they sent me, you know, a whole long sheet of it. I can't, it doesn't seem to me there was a whole lot of circumpolar, um, on circumpolar help in it. Now, one of the men that's here in town that worked with Albrecht on the organization of this, since the seven meeting, is Dr. A.B. Collier. Oh, no, I don't know that man. That's funny, no one's given me that name. I've gotten so many names. And uh, he was also the medical director for the Harvard Health Research Center. And had worked with him for it. He's here now. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is, uh, who is Milan? I don't, I don't understand how he and Albrecht share this Albrecht Milan Foundation. Who, who is Milan? Okay. Milan is an anthropologist. Oh. And Milan enters the picture as a first as a student at the University of Alaska Fairbanks as an anthropology student and a physiology student. And in the early 60s, he worked with the Arctic Area Medical Research Laboratory. The Arctic? Arctic. Arctic Area Medical. Area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Arctic Aerial Medical Research? Medical Research Laboratory. Okay. Is that a governmental body? Yes, that's right. That was a, actually that was an Air Force body. Okay. Uh, to do cold weather analysis okay. and so on and so forth. Okay. They're the ones that right now are involved in this uh, big congressional investigative study investigation about testing the natives with uh, oh really yeah uh -huh. Uh -huh. and again people are using today's standards and judging our past programs for that uh -huh. yeah. in yeah. other words they're taking what we know today and mm -hmm. that what we did yeah yeah and uh, so 
I know those studies and I know mm -hmm. what was accomplished there. That we were ethical, everything was explained to the people. Really? Mm -hmm. And nobody's lives was ever endangered uh -huh. in any way. Uh -huh. It was accepted. I mean, these people were treated the same way as any white Christians were treated by this the administration. Uh, was for, in many cases, study thyroid conditions. Oh, I see. They use the same doses now, all huh. the time. Huh. How did Milan get together with Albert? So, I'm taking a round of that. But I'm interested to know that. That's no idea. And so, he then became the. Uh, yes. So he was then doing a, a cardiac study for the. I did a little bit laboratory, and did quite a few others. So he was staying now in the research area, mm -hmm. and Fred also had studied uh, a uh, a great linguist, mm -hmm. he studied the Eskimo language and mm -hmm. the Eskimo people. And uh, I was delighted in him talking to them in their own tongue. Yeah. And he lived with the Greenlanders and lived with the Northern Canadian people. And, uh, so he became involved at the 67 meeting, more or less as a participant. I see. Mm -hmm. And then his interest continued in the state and, of course, continued to present papers at I the see. International uh -huh. uh -huh. and built up a great rapport with the Scandinavian people. Uh -huh. And so he was known best in the scientific circles. Okay. Then, he then, when Albright was over near the Sibirus and other areas, uh, by this time, Fred himself was up in the, I'll call it, in the hierarchy of the International Union on certain other committees. Uh -huh. And I'm the secretary of the man. So, me and Albrecht was one always, always active, so their paths were crossing all the time. And whereas Albrecht knew, say, in the state side, quite a few of the people, say in public health, he didn't know some of those in the Academy of Sciences or anything like that. Okay. They did. And um, Fred also had a good smattering of, of Russian and the Russians. My goodness. And he was a linguist. And so he was able to uh, he would tell Albert from uh, so and so in the National Academy, and this one, and this one, and this one, they all say, well, you can point them out to me and talk to me and work with them. And so, Fred then was elected in, he was, in, he was a charter member of the American Society. And he organized. And then he was appointed as the as the president for the organizing committee for the 1984 meeting, okay. the international meeting. For the mm -hmm. So he was president. Okay. Well, what were they, what are they comparable in aid? Were they comparable in aid? Were they, were they contemporaries? No. No. 
Fred sounds so bit younger. Fred, Fred was, was much younger. Fred's around about 60. Now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is he here? Fred's in Fairbanks. Uh, unfortunately, he's suffered a series of strokes. And um, he has a pituitary gland tumor. Oh, dear. He's been knocking on death's door about five times. Wow. He's in the pioneers home in Fairbanks. We think he recognizes people. Oh, no. He can, he can amble about. Oh, dear. Really? But, uh... Isn't there a brain like that, a mind like that? He has... Yeah. He's had several strokes, and each time he's come back, he's... He's going to speak. Just very good his words. Oh, dear. He's yeah. going to wipe it out and come back again. <sighs> and this time, he's been wiped out. Oh, so you just see that a, a, a terrible, 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 terrible. And uh, yeah. he can't put things together too much in writing. Yeah. So yeah. there's a tremendous amount of information. I'm sure. That's a game for time. Right. Right. But he's up in the palm of the time. Yeah. Well, in the Palmer Pioneer Home. Oh, the Fair Fairbanks. Fairbanks Pioneer Home. He was first admitted to the Palmer Pioneer Home. Uh huh. Well, it was too far away for the family. Yeah. And we couldn't get up there often. Uh huh. And so uh -huh. there was an opening in Fairbanks. So yeah. He was transferred to Fairbanks. He was moved to Fairbanks in February. So. Oh, dear. Well, was this uh, naming this uh, Al Albert of Milan Foundation was that was honorary? I, I would assume this it was a way of honoring him. And, um, and when, when was that? When was that created? When we created the foundation. Uh, oh, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was going to be the the Albert Foundation. Uh huh. But I felt, and I was, I was instrumental in that second part, but I, knowing how much work Fred did mm -hmm. behind the scenes, right. and in the scientific circles, right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I felt that we were just as much honor right. to, uh, to Fred as to did to Earl. Sure. I mean, Earl was the... Mm -hmm. Earl was, was a politician and mm -hmm. he could work with groups. Fred worked with the scientists. Yeah. But he could work with the field groups. Mm -hmm. He was the one that went out and talked to the people in the field. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. He talked to the village council. Yeah. Yeah. He established the protocols. Yeah. He talked to the yeah. village councils. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we organized the International Biological Program mm -hmm. on Human Death Ability. And